you are the theist, one who believes in God. The atheist is one who lacks belief in God due to lack of proof. So you are making the claim that God is real. That is your responsibility to prove that God is real. By you shifting the responsibility onto the disbeliever to prove that God is not real is a logical fallacy known as the burden of proof. You are making the claim that God is real. So the responsibility is on you to have extraordinary and substantial evidence to make that claim. All right, so cool. Listen, I had to get my coffee for this one. You and I both know that realistically, there's no way that I could by definition prove to you that God exists. But I'm going to give you 10 pieces of evidence for God that better explain our reality. And I'm going to do it without saying anything about church, religion, or the Bible. Reason number one, our ability to love. The fact that we can love or even care about another person shows that there's more to life than just matter and energy. Love is so much more than just oxytocin and chemicals running through your brain and your body. And when you reduce love down to just chemical feelings, it makes love very selfish and all about you, which leads to love just being merely a self-contradiction. But we know that you can give and receive love without any sort of corresponding change in dopamine levels. Number two, you give your life meaning because if you didn't think your life had meaning, wouldn't you just commit suicide? The only way that you can attach meaning to your life is if God created you for a purpose. If there is no God, then we're just chemical byproducts of nature here, which would make our life about as purposeful as the rocks that people say we naturally evolved from, thereby making our life ultimately meaningless. Number three, order and design point to an intelligent mind. You don't get intelligence by accident and you don't get order by chance. You look at this book and you say that an intelligent mind created the book. You don't say that the pictures naturally fell on the page. And our world appears to be design and design demands for a designer. Number four, if you take the engine out of a car and try to drive it, it's not just that it's going to take you longer to get where you're trying to go. It's that you're not going to get there at all because the car is broken. And irreducible complexity shows that you can't go from this stage to this stage because if in between something happens to be missing, then this stage never happens. Just think about how complex the eye is. If there's something missing, it doesn't work. Even Charles Darwin pointed this out. Complex things don't just happen by chance, nor do they happen solely by naturalistic causes. And if you want to say that they happen by nature because there's no other option, well, that's just the naturalism of the gaps argument. If you want to believe that you're an intelligent chemical byproduct of nature, then more power to you. That's just not what I believe because there's enough examples of things that are irreducibly complex that couldn't have just evolved by nature alone. Number five, the universe was created out of nothing, right? And we do know that indeed the universe has a beginning and where there is a beginning, there has to be a cause for that beginning, the law of cause and effect. For every material effect we see, there is a cause that came before it. And the best explanation of that cause is God. Because before the universe, there was no space, no time, and no matter. So whatever created space, time, and matter had to have been spaceless, timeless, immaterial, and personal to make the decision to create. Because impersonal forces like gravity don't choose to create. Number six. Objective standards for morals demand a moral lawgiver. Example, I don't know too many people who don't morally agree that harming children is wrong. And that doesn't come from society or the government. That comes from a moral lawgiver outside of us. Otherwise, what we consider to be good or bad is all just subjective opinion. Number seven, rational minds point to a rational God. It's crazy to think that the rational comes naturally from the irrational. Because if that's true, it would mean your mind is an accident or just a chemical byproduct of nature. And why would you trust your mind at that point that any of your thoughts were true? Number eight, life demands a life giver. Contrary to what atheists believe, life does not come 
from non-life. Life doesn't come from non-living chemicals. It's biologically impossible. Never have we seen or observed, scientifically or otherwise, life arise from non-life. And to think that all of the birds, the bees, the flowers, the trees, and us humans all came naturally from a non-living cause with no intervention requires more faith than I could ever believe in. Number nine, the historical resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's so much documentation surrounding this, I don't even really want to get into it in this video. But Jesus wasn't just some fairy tale figure. There's evidence to show that Jesus was a real person. He lived, he died, forgiving his enemies, and he rose from the dead. And number 10, because free will exists, and there's no naturalistic or biological way to explain why we have free will. It's crazy to me to think that since atheists base their view on materialism, that they don't believe that they have free will. And if you don't believe that you got the free will to choose, then you're basically admitting that you are a slave to the biochemical responses that are going off in your brain. And when you don't have a world view that allows you to even make sense of a human soul, how can you attempt to make sense of anything else going on in the world around you? I can freely choose whether I want vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. Even though I might want the vanilla ice cream more because I despise the chocolate, I can still choose the chocolate ice cream if I want to. So here's an example of the difference of the opposing views. My decision to become a believer of God is based on my free will to do so. Your decision to become an atheist is just an accumulation of past events that have happened to you and you haven't really made a decision to become an atheist because you believe that free will is an illusion. So watching this video, was it a choice or was it an illusion? Anyway, that's 10 pieces of evidence I got for you. Let me know if you want some more. I can do this all day. I hope this helps somebody. Peace.